In this course, we'll use the Python programming language to make a password cracker. So if you never programmed Python before, I recommend that you learn the language um, because we'll use some things called modules and other stuff here. So it might look very cryptic if you never programmed Python before. So if you never programmed Python before, uh, head over to python.org and uh, download and install Python. You'll see uh, some example code here online. Um, but I recommend taking a course if you never programmed Python before, because this is an intermediary course that assumes you already know the basics of the Python programming language. And what we'll build um, in this course is several programs. Uh, one of the programs will just start entering passwords one by one uh, until the right password is found. In another program, um, we have a, a, a password protected zip file. So uh, you, you often find zip files on the internet, uh, maybe in emails or other stuff. And we'll make a program to automatically crack that zip file. And we also have another project uh, where we make a password cracker. So this is an intermediary course because you should already know the basics of Python. However, no advanced knowledge of Python is required. So you don't need to know about object-oriented programming or GUI programming or stuff like that. It's really um, an intermediary course in the sense that uh, you should know the basics of Python and that's it. First, what is ethical hacking? So you may know hacking from movies. There's a lot of movies about computer hacking. Um, and uh, the, the main idea is to gain access to a certain computer or certain files that are uh, that you're not supposed to have. For example, you may have an email account with a username password and you want to gain, you don't know the password, but you want to have access to that email account. It might be a remote computer, so someone else's computer where you want to get access. Uh, you may want to have certain information. Uh, so there are different ways uh, or different types of hacking. And um, when talking about legal hacking, uh, we, we talk about ethical hacking. So sometimes it's called white hat hacking or in job descriptions you'll often see penetration testing as a way to show that it's legal and not criminal activity uh, of course the, there are different types of hacking so you can do network hacking uh, website hacking computer hacking password hacking email hacking and so on in this course we'll just focus on password hacking um, using the python programming language and of course, um, this should only be used for legal purposes, um, so not for criminal activity. You can use this to test if your passwords are secure or if the passwords of your customer are secure. So uh, in terminology, sometimes they talk about white hat or black hat hackers, where uh, white hat means people who use hacking skills for legal purposes and black hat means for criminal purposes. Um, but in the media, that's often like totally neglected and they'll just say hacker for everything. So um, if you look for kind of jobs um, skills, what you love to see is that they use penetration testing as a term um, to totally distinguish from the criminal activity that uh, goes on around the world. So in this course, we'll make password crackers and uh, it will try to automatically find a password for an account. Uh, we have three projects in this course that uh, make things easier. Uh, programming projects, and you should have some Python programming language uh, knowledge before starting this course. Now, before you get started, install a module called PyAutoGUI. You can do that with this command. And this command lets you control the mouse and keyboard with Python. So you can control the mouse and keyboard using code. Uh, this should work on Windows, Mac OS X and Linux. I'm using Linux right here. So what you need to do is to copy the command here into your terminal uh, and install that package. If you use an uh, IDE like PyCharm, you can find PyAutoGUI uh, in the uh, module list for installing. Um, so this works on uh, Windows and on Linux and on Mac. And it lets you control the um, the keyboard and the mouse using code. 
So download and install this module first. So copy that into the terminal and paste it for installation. Now I have already installed it, but paste that into your terminal and it will install that uh, module. So this Pi Auto GUI, you can install it with pip. So let's build a password cracker. We have a program here, example.py, uh, which is just for demonstration purposes. Uh, of course, there are many uh, graphical interfaces or command line interfaces where you can type a password. So this little program you can download as a text file. And if you run it, you'll see uh, it will ask for a password and it will keep doing that until the password is correct. Uh, so when you keep typing the wrong password, um, it just keeps asking you. And we'll try to crack the password, so to brute force it. And we'll do that by using a list of 10 million passwords. Uh, these are 10 million commonly used passwords. And it, the computer will try every password automatically. Now, let me just show you that file. So we have a file of 10 million uh, commonly used passwords, uh, which people often use this kind of passwords, right? Um, so if the password is within the 10 million uh, commonly used passwords, then uh, it will be guessed and the password is correct. And it will try every password one by one. So it will try this one, then that one, then that one, then that one. And we'll write a Python program to do that. So I have already did a head start created the program cracker.py which opens the file for reading uh, so this opens the file uh, you can download this attached file we open it for reading if the password if the file cannot be opened so it have a try here you get to the accept part where it says file cannot be opened and then it will loop over every password in the password file uh, remove the new line character and finally output the password so if you run that program, you'll see it just loops over this password file and outputs every password in there. And you can break it using Ctrl C or just wait for it to output all 10 million passwords. And we can use this um, password file. So the password file uh, we have here contains those 10 million passwords and we can use it to automatically try every password. It's called a dictionary ls attack. A dictionary attack, we have 10 million passwords in our dictionary. Of course, you can have different dictionaries. It can be 10 million, it can be 100 million, it can be a billion. Um, so depending on, uh, on which password list you have. So let's build a password cracker. We have a program here, example.py, uh, which is just for demonstration purposes. Uh, of course, there are many uh, graphical interfaces or command line interfaces where you can type a password. So this little program you can download as a text file. And if you run it, you'll see uh, it will ask for a password and it will keep doing that until the password is correct. Uh, so when you keep typing the wrong password, um, it just keeps asking you and we'll try to crack the passwords so or to brute force it and we'll do that by using a list of 10 million passwords uh, these are 10 million commonly used passwords and it the computer will try every password automatically now let me just show you that file so we have a file of 10 million uh, commonly used passwords uh, which people often use this kind of passwords, right? Um, so if the password is within the 10 million uh, commonly used passwords, then uh, it will be guessed and the password is correct. And it will try every password one by one. So it will try this one, then that one, then that one, then that one. And we'll write a Python program to do that. So I have already did a head start created the program cracker.py which opens the file for reading uh, so this opens the file uh, you can download this attached file 
We open it for reading. If the password, if the file cannot be opened, so it have a try here. You get to the accept part where it says file cannot be opened. And then it will loop over every password in the password file. Uh, remove the new line character and finally output the password. So if you run that program, you'll see it just loops over this password file and outputs every password in there. And you can break it using Ctrl C or just wait for it to output all 10 million passwords. And we can use this um, password file. So the password file uh, we have here contains those 10 million passwords and we can use it to automatically try every password. It's called a dictionary LS attack. A dictionary attack, we have 10 million passwords in our dictionary. Of course, you can have different dictionaries. It can be 10 million, it can be 100 million, it can be a billion. Um, so depending on, uh, on which password list you have. So we'll update the program and make it type every password automatically. So import by auto GUI that I mentioned earlier. We'll use that for automation of keyboard and mouse inputs. Then we import the time module. We make the program wait five seconds before it starts typing anything. Then we let it write some text and uh, press a certain key. And of course, it needs to sleep uh, some time. And the text we want to write is, of course, our passwords. And the key you want to press is the enter key with every password, right? Because uh, we loop over the password with a for loop. And every time the password is typed, uh, this is the, the interval between the key presses. Every time the password is typed, it presses the enter key, so it goes to the next line. And to demonstrate that, we will run this script in Notepad. So we'll open Notepad here on the side, run the program. We have five seconds to open Notepad. And you'll see that it starts typing uh, every password automatically, every password in that dictionary list or password list. So it goes over every password automatically, which is exactly what we need. So we can close this and look at the code again. Uh, one thing you can do is to speed up the typing. So let's say a hundredth of a second. And let's clear this list. Run the program. And now you should see it start typing a lot faster. So it it's trying the password at a faster speed. Uh, you can close it by clicking on the terminal Ctrl Z or Ctrl C. Um, and we can use this uh, for our input of our other program, which was asking the password, right? Let's create a password cracker using Python. So we'll try to crack the uh, password for this zip file. You can at download this as an attached file. If I click on it, uh, sorry, if you try to extract it, uh, you'll see you get a password field. And if you, of course, it's password protected. And so by default, uh, it just shows you an error if you don't guess the right password. Um, in order to crack the password, we use a list of 10 million passwords. So you'll see we have a huge list here. We have a huge list of 10 million uh, often used passwords. And what the Python program will do is try every password one by one for that zip file. Now it's 10 million passwords, so commonly used passwords. So the chance is like a quite a big chance that um, the password uh, for the zip file is inside this list because it's 10 million passwords that are commonly used. So how do we do that? We need to write a Python program that tries every password one by one for this zip file. So the first thing to do is, of course, to read the 10 million passwords from the text file. And you can use any text editor for uh, creating your program. I'll call it cracker.py, you can use Vim, you can use Nano, you can use Emacs. 
If you use Visual Studio Code or something like that, you can use it as well. Whatever you feel comfortable with um, writing Python code. So I'll call it cracker.py and we'll try to open the file. So um, the, I'll copy the file name here because that's the file we'll try to open. So we can say our password file is open, the file name, and we want to open it for reading. Now, of course, what you want to do is to check if the file exists uh, on your computer, because if you don't literally copy, you can have a typo in there or the file can be missing. So we want to try opening the file. And if the file cannot be opened, we want to quit the program. So this will just open the file and it will throw an error if the file cannot be opened. Now to test this, uh, let's add some nonsense character here so that we know the file doesn't exist and see that it throws an error. So we'll try cracker.py and you'll see password file uh, not opened because uh, we deliberately made a typo here. So let's remove that, try to run it again. You'll see now it runs the program without error. Then for every word in the pass file, uh, let's output that. So for words in pass file, print words, or we could say for every password in the password file. So if you run it, you'll see it starts outputting every password in that file. And just to make things a bit more clear, let's remove the new line. Uh, sorry. And so that just loops over all the passwords in the file, which is exactly what we want, right? We want to try every file uh, in the password file. You see it loops very quickly over the 10 million passwords. 10 million passwords is not like a huge database, but it's large enough for the to, to catch the most common passwords. So I have opened up Tmux because it's easier to work with that. However, for the course, that doesn't really matter. Um, so we have a zip file here, secret.zip, and the command to try to decrypt the file is unzip minus p with your passwords, and then the zip file. So if it's the right password, it will extract the zip file uh, into the same directory. If it's the wrong password, it won't uh, do that. Then it will just say skipping. So we can run this command automatically uh, with the given passwords. So let's um, output that. So we define the commands is this command and instead of having uh, the word password hard-coded we want to specify passwords from the file um, we can delete this line and say outputs the commands then if we run the program um, you should see the commands, uh, unique command for every password. And uh, in this case, password contains a new line, so we remove that. You'll see every pass, there's a new line here every time. You want the command without a new line. So we remove the new line character using the replace function, new line with nothing. So this removes the new line character from the password string or the passwords. Um, the new line will be removed from the passwords and then it'll output the commands um, each time. So if you run this program, you'll see the command for every, um, every command it needs to run. And it's just continue. You can use control C to break it. Um, so 
Uh, this is exactly what we want. And next we want Python to run this command. So we can say import OS for operating system. And then we can just run that command os.system cmd, which will uh, run uh, this command. So for every, uh, every password in the loop, it will run this command. You'll see os.system runs the command, so it will run, it will try every password uh, on that zip file. So if you look at the um, If you look at the directory here, there is no, uh, the zip file is not extracted, right? It's password protected. And now we can run the program. And you'll see now it's trying to crack the password. And uh, if the password is in the list, it's just a matter of time um, before the password is cracked. So then it will appear um, in the same directory here. Is trying every password uh, using that command. And of course, there will be a lot of um, wrong passwords because there are 10 million passwords. And uh, depending on the, um, on the password, uh, it can take a while to uh, find it. However, uh, if the password is in the list, then it should work and the directory should appear in the same directory. Programmers often, or not always, but often hash passwords before they store it into a database. So when you have a database uh, and you have like many users, what the programmer will do is store the username and the password into the database. However, um, a good programmer will not store the passwords in just as it is, like the original password. But what they'll do is store a hash. And the hash is created as inputs um, with the original password that enters a hashing algorithm and that outputs the hash. And what the programmer does is store the hashes of the passwords and not the uh, original passwords. And they do that because uh, once in a while computers get hacked or web servers get hacked and then they would have direct access to the database and immediately have access to all of the users that are stored into the database. Um, however, if the server gets hacked and the passwords are hashed, then the attacker only has those hashes. So what this hashing does um, is you, it takes input for text and turns that into another text called the hash or the hash sum. So with different inputs, it creates different outputs depending on the hash function or the algorithm, the hashing algorithm. Um, if you play around with it, for example, you can say SHA256, that's a hashing algorithm, and you can type some text. Uh, this is on DuckDuckGo.com, uh, and it immediately shows you the hash for that word. Now, the hash is unique, and every time you change one output, you'll see a massive change in the uh, hash. So a little change in input creates a um, totally different hash, and the hashes are unique. So if we make a little change again, you'll see a totally different hash. Now what the um, web program will do or the server is that some app is running here that communicates with the database. The user enters the password, it goes into the hashing algorithm and uh, it calculates the hash that it then compares with the hash in the database. So whenever the user enters it, it goes into the hash function you have the hash text that is then compared with the existing one. If it's the same, the user is locked in. And if it's not the same, um, it's an incorrect password. So the programmers often store those hashes into the, those hashes into the database um, instead of storing plain text. Now there are different hashing algorithms. For example, there's the uh, SHA256 algorithm. There's the older MD5 algorithm and they are creating different types of hashes, uh, which are of different lengths. Now, the main thing to remember is just that hash functions exist and they create uh, an output based on the password input. So it turns the password into a different type of password 
and this kind of thing is hard to reverse, right? Um, once you have some text like this, how do you get back to that kind of input? And the, the main point of the hashing algorithm is that you can't. So what a trick you can do is like once you are, have access to uh, a web server and the database hashes, you can just go over a dictionary and try generate every uh, possible hash from the dictionary and compare it with the database passwords. So how do you do that? Uh, again, we have the 10 million uh, passwords. And uh, if you run the program, it just outputs the passwords. So we loop over the passwords. We have 10 million passwords that we loop over. And we'll use a module called hashlib to do the hashing. And for every password, we'll calculate the hash. So you can do that uh, like this. Password of encodes. And we'll say the hash or the digest hashlib dot specify the hashing algorithm you want to use. In this case, I'm using the MD5 hashing algorithm. There are different ones. So you should use the same hashing algorithm um, that has been used by the victim. Then we calculate the hex digits by calling it, um, the digits. So this calculates the hash, this line. Uh, and we can output that as well. So we say password and the digits or the hash. And then we can, of course, remove that line. So let's run this. And you'll see um, it outputs hashes. And what you want to do is also output the password. If you run it, um, you'll see we have that new line again. So make sure to remove that before. Remove it using the replace function and remove the new line character with an empty character. And now you'll see the passwords with the calculated hashes. Now you can verify that this is correct. Um, with the web browser. So if you go to DuckDuckGo.com and we say MD5 for the words sin sign, you'll see it's the same hash, uh, 64A680. Uh, that's the same hash as here. So it's calculating the hash for every password. And uh, if you take another one, for example, SIPI, it starts with D4482. So if we calculate it, D4482, that's the correct hash for uh, the word SIPI. Uh, and basically, uh, if you let this program run, it will calculate 10 million hashes. And what you'll do is you'll have an input hash that you found in your database, or that you get access to that hash somehow. So the input hash, And if we run it, it will ask you the input hash. And then what you'll do is to, uh, we go over the hash word list. And if the input hash is equal to the one we found in the password list, we can say the password is found and the password is um, password. Uh, so that will stop the program. Sorry, there should be a break here, otherwise it won't stop. That will stop the program once the hash uh, has been found. So when we have the password that is correct, um, then it will break. And it does so based on the input hash, if that's equal to one of the hashes found uh, in the 10 million hashes of the password list. So. Let's try that. We create the MD5 hash for some common passwords. Let's say one, two, three, four, five, six. 
So there we have a hash. Let's say we found this in our database on the victim's computer. Then we can run the program, paste the hash, and you'll see it immediately found the password 123456. So let's say we found another password, uh, another common password. Um, might be, uh, let's just look it up, some common passwords. Um, let's say I love you. So calculate the hash for that. Let's say we found this hash in the database, the database of the victim of the web server. So we run the program, we paste the hash, let it run and you see it found the password is I love you based on the uh, hash that was found on the server. So this works for this program works. One thing you have to keep in mind is that uh, the hashing algorithm. So like I mentioned, there's MD5, which is one of the hashing algorithms, um, but there are many. So the hashing algorithm turns inputs into the hash sum, but there are different hash functions or hash algorithms. MD5 is one of them. There's SSH256 and um, a lot of different hashing algorithms. So if you search for that, you can actually find the list of um, different hashing algorithms that exist. Um, so these are all hashing algorithms, MD5, SEC0, 1, 2, uh, 3. So there are different uh, hashing algorithms and you want to use the same hashing algorithm as the programmer has used. So once you compromise the server and you found that the programmer has hashed the passwords, you can still often find them uh, using a program like this, where you have your password list that calculates every password the hash. And then once uh, the input hash is equal to the hash of one of the 10 million passwords, we know the passwords. So if you have successfully created the, the password cracking programs and had success in finding the passwords, uh, the next thing you could do is to look into more ethical hacking courses. Um, or try with uh, different kind of files that are password protected and tr see if your uh, password cracking program can find those passwords. So this is just an introduction course. There's a lot more to ethical hacking. Um, and in this course, we used Python. That's optional. Um, you can, of course, use any programming language or any set of tools for ethical hacking. Um, in this case, we use Python because I'm very... Um, good at python and at the same time uh, it's an easy language to quickly understand uh, as compared to the c language or c plus plus the python language is almost like um, runnable pseudocodes so it makes it very easy to grasp the concepts so by the end of this course you should have all three programs um, and uh, be able to write them on your own and be able to crack uh, those passwords using the password lists